My name is Alistair Sorby. I'm the uh, CEO and President of IFS. IFS is a Swedish uh, ERP company um, and we operate in 60 countries around the world today. We have around, roughly about 2,400 uh, customers worldwide and we've probably got about 900,000 users using our product every day globally. So we are a substantial company, global reach, and we tend to specialize in certain areas of, of the market, namely asset intensive manufacturing, um, and that's to do with uh, assets that need maintained service as well as the production side of it as well. So you'll find us in the area of in, in production manufacturing, uh, also in asset management, for example, in offshore oil and gas, in uh, any asset intensive industry, such as mining, infrastructure, those type of areas, but also aerospace and defense as well. So that's typically where IFS operates. And um, for that reason, we find that uh, the African continent is an exciting uh, opportunity for us. Um, it's not a new opportunity. We've been here since 1999. I, I came down here in December 1999 and set up this business, uh, set up IFS in, uh, in South Africa. And we've been here ever since. Our offices are in Centurion. And um, we originally came in because we had interest in uh, working with the South African Defence Organisation, but also uh, working with uh, telcos like uh, MTN and also MTC in Namibia. So that's where we started out in South Africa. Most recently, we worked with Sun International, and uh, we've uh, had a good relationship with that particular customer. But I guess the, the wider Africa for us is all about uh, infrastructure investments, uh, ports, uh, railroads, uh, also mining, those type of things, and offshore as well, perhaps, and off the coast of uh, Africa, where that, that's occurring right now. Um, definitely, uh, many of our customers, global customers, are actively building operations in Africa, uh, principally because it has, in the last few years, had the highest growth rates of any countries in the world. Uh, obviously, they come from a lower base, but there's a lot of attention, a lot of interest, and different international companies, be it Chinese or whatever else, are actively trying to establish a, you know, a strong presence in Africa. And it's the mineral wealth, I guess, that, that's the real attraction for the country, uh, for some of the economies where that's uh, needed. Um, so I think uh, as, as that type of investment proceeds, there's an opportunity for us to provide sophisticated solutions, but on a very quick and timely basis. Uh, modern solutions for uh, asset intensive businesses where people can take advantage of mobility, uh, workforce scheduling, mobile workforce scheduling, um, clever technology, you know, internet of things, linking uh, assets to back office systems. These are all uh, sweet spots for IFS today. For IFS, the, the continent of Africa has a lot of opportunities in areas such as mining, um, infrastructure, um, also oil and gas. So we see the potential for our business in Africa generally is to provide solutions in those particular areas because clearly um, if those investments are being made right now, uh, if you put those uh, assets in place you need something to maintain them to actually control their sort of uh, assembly and construction and also the ongoing maintenance. So we see that IFS uh, can add some value to what's being invested into the African continent right now. In Africa, um, specifically I'd say uh, the main uh, economies of Africa, South Africa, um, also Nigeria, where we've had a number of customers for many years, um, and the telco markets, but also uh, interestingly now oil and gas as well. Kenya, of course, is a, another area of interest, um, but we've been working in the African continent from uh, um, Libya and, and Egypt right the way down to South Africa, so we've, we've been active all over Africa in the, in the last 10 years, so we've been present in all manner of places. Uh, for example, we, we, one of the early sites we worked on was MTC in Namibia, so we, we put a system in there quite quickly. So, um, yeah, it's Pan-Africa, basically. Yeah, I, I would see that uh, the ERP market uh, going forward is getting influenced by quite significant technology changes right now, um, and it's how people interface with the, the applications. I mean, the old days of working with a terminal um, don't necessarily reflect what people aspire to do today. So if you take a, um, a sophisticated mobile device, be it a you know, mobile phone or a tablet, it means that people can do some very clever stuff on the move. Um, obviously, if you're talking about service and you're sending expensive uh, qualified engineers around to attend to mission-critical piece of equipment, 
then getting that person to the right site at the right time with the right uh, materials and also the right history of that particular asset they're working on uh, will make that job far more successful and therefore um, A, you get the asset more productive but it also makes the operation providing the service more profitable and that is facilitated by the mobile device which you couldn't do before because the, the real-time access to data coming down to uh, um, handheld devices um, transforms the way these companies operate. It's a major paradigm shift in the industry. And a lot of the industries we work on are engineer-centric, so there's people doing stuff in the field with assets uh, or with projects where they're recording information on large installations. For example, if you're working on building a major port uh, infrastructure and you're an engineer reporting progress against a project, um, you don't want to have to get in your car and drive back to the project office to key in the data to, to support the project. You can do it on the move, you can do it from your mobile phone, you can do it from a tablet, uh, and therefore you, you, can, you, you can do stuff real time. So the information is much more uh, real time. Obviously when stuff goes into the system, it comes back, it's validated so you know you've uh, recorded correctly. And more, more than that is if you're actually travelling around and you're in an airport and you're doing an international project, you can use your time in the departure lounge uh, to actually work on a project real time because the, the, the international nature of connectivity and projects is uh, you know, a major asset right now today for us. So, um, yeah, technology is changing the way a lot of people are operating that now. And obviously you could go on to talk about the Internet of Things as well, and where you're actually linking assets to assets um, where real-time information is coming out of an asset which is measuring its own performance and feeding back to a system like we operate to, to warn the system that it needs to find some spares, it needs to schedule downtime, it needs to you know, top up uh, lubricants or something like that. So the systems become much more sort of uh, like an operating system, checking their own well-being and using our systems you know, through the supply chain or the, the uh, resource sharing to address that. I would say that uh, IFS is a unique uh, offering in uh, an environment like Africa because Africa um, tends to operate at lower margins, um, it needs things doing more quickly, um, it's urgent and therefore the, the pace of implementation needs to be swifter and more reliable. You, you can't really afford to get too much stuff wrong and have long length projects and just burn up um, people's time and money and not actually deliver anything. I don't think some of the, the businesses and the economies of Africa can, can afford that luxury. They need to have start up and running quickly um, to make, uh, take advantage of the opportunities they face today. So I think that's where IFS is a strong edge. We tend to get systems in quicker with a lower to total cost of ownership, much more flexible systems, a lot more uh, technology innovation going into the product as well. So uh, people can feel they get a modern, easy, flexible system to operate um, and it's a good buzz. Thank you very much for your time this morning, it's been uh, very much appreciated.